Now the U.S. State Department is warning people not to travel to five states in Mexico. A strict do not travel alert posted to six additional Mexican states. These four Americans abducted in broad daylight in Mexico have been found. Sadly, two of them are dead. March 3rd, 2023, a tourist named Latavia McGee went to Mexico with three of her friends to get a tummy tuck surgery. However, they got kidnapped by a faction of the Gulf Cartel, and the torture they endured changed the course of their lives forever. Here are five times tourists messed with the wrong cartels. Number five, Victor Masson. May 15th, 2023, Victor Masson, a 27-year-old out of Quebec, Canada, was having a lovely time in the Mexican beach town of Puerto Escondido. Before a group of sicarios approached him, Masson had no dealings with cartels, at least none that we know of, just a regular tourist in Mexico looking to have a good time. However, these sicarios harassed and fatally shot him dead in his car before fleeing the neighborhood. Masson arrived in Mexico with his girlfriend, and at the moment he was killed, she was still at the hotel where they were staying. They arrived at the beach town the day before, while Masson decided to grab a drink alone. When he got to the bar, he encountered four individuals who, probably because they were drunk, continuously threatened him. One of these individuals was a known cartel member named Mario Omara Sanguinez Lopez. And when it came time to settle the bill, Omar and his guys harassed Masson and tried compelling him to pay for their drinks. Obviously, Masson refused, but began to panic at that moment. He made a video of these guys and also sent a voice note to his girlfriend explaining everything. He dialed for the police after things got out of hand, but that was the last anyone heard of Masson. On the other side of the street stood a man named Sergio Ruiz Luengas, casually strolling along. In a chilling twist of fate, Sergio bore witness to the gruesome scene of Masson's murder. According to Sergio, he observed Mr. Omara and his gang as they robbed Masson, but the situation took a dark turn when Omara himself drew his pistol and fired two fatal shots into Masson. Right after overhearing Masson's desperate call to the cops reporting the robbery, immediately after committing the grim act, Omara approached Sergio and issued a threat warning him to never speak a word about the night's events to anyone. One week later, Sergio would go against the warning and report the case to the police. At the time, investigations were already ongoing to apprehend suspects in the murder case. Sergio's statement and the ID on Omara as the man who pulled the trigger was all the cops needed to charge Omara with first-degree murder. Sadly, it cost Sergio his life. Remember, these guys aren't petty criminals. They're hardened cartel sicarios who would stop at nothing to get revenge, even if it meant risking the lives of thousands of men. After Omara was arrested, Sergio was killed a few days later, making this case even more sophisticated. On the other hand, there was Victor Masson's family, who were finding it extremely difficult to get a lawyer to represent him. You have to understand that no one really wants to mess with any cartel members. It's like committing suicide, like jumping into a fire while still alive. It's really dangerous. His girlfriend had to take the next flight back to Canada to avoid getting killed as well. As of right now, Omar is in custody with Mexican authorities, being linked to the infamous Oaxaca cartel, a small faction of the Tijuana cartel that operates in the area. Since their only eyewitness to the murder is now dead, will Masson's girlfriend come forward with audio and video evidence in her possession, knowing she might get killed? Who knows? Number 4. Lisbeth Flores August 11th, 2020. The body of 23-year-old Lisbeth Flores was found dead in the Mexican town of Matamoros, just across the Rio Grande from Brownsville. Keep in mind that Flores was a mother of two and was also in Mexico for vacation. So, what's the story behind her murder? Lisbeth was born in the close-knit border community of Brownsville, Texas. She'd graduated from Los Fresnos High School and had her first child almost right after. Ever since then, Lisbeth dedicated herself to motherhood. She lived with her children and took care of them the best way possible. Sadly, these children lost their mother because of one Sicario and sex offender named Braulio Martinez. August 9th, 2023. Lisbeth Flores told her mother Maria that she'd be crossing the border into Matamoros to visit her boyfriend. For context, Matamoros sits directly across the Rio Grande from Brownsville, and Flores assured her mother that she would return later that same evening. This wasn't her first time crossing the border, but for some reason, her decision to do it didn't sit right with her mother. Maybe it was her instincts telling her something bad was about to happen. But regardless, she let Lisbeth go. 
However, the moment she failed to return home that night, Maria knew something was wrong. She wasted no time in filing a missing persons report with the Brownsville Police Department the next morning, desperately hoping that the authorities could swiftly locate her daughter. Tragically, the day after the filing, Mexican officials discovered her lifeless body abandoned in a field on the outskirts of Matamoros. The condition of her remains was shockingly horrific. She'd been brutally assaulted, with her teeth callously removed before her passing. The fatal injury seemed to be from a powerful blow to the head using this large rock discovered at the scene. Some say it was a robbery, others say it was sexual assault, but no one really knows what happened exactly between Lisbeth and the killer. The good thing is, the killer was arrested. On August 11th, Martinez was caught at his residence in connection with the murder, and after pleading no contest, he was sentenced to 168 months imprisonment. That's 14 years behind bars. Now, do you really think that's enough jail time for this crime he committed? Well, regardless of what you say, certain people in Lisbeth's community didn't think so. Neighbors, friends, and even strangers rallied together to support the Flores family in the weeks after her death. Community vigils were held to honor her, with attendees sharing tearful embraces on who Lisbeth was. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, it's simple. Her death was one of many that have occurred along the border between the US and Mexico. She wasn't the first and certainly won't be the last to experience such a gruesome death without committing any crime. Due to the level of violence in this area, her mother is now left without a child, and her own kids are left without a mother. Thankfully, local businesses stepped up by contributing funds to her children's education. And on top of that, a well-respected Brownsville funeral home even volunteered to repatriate Flores' body in a bid to relieve her poor mother of the financial burden. And while these actually help, nothing will ever bring Lisbeth Flores back. Number 3 Anjali Rayat and Jennifer Hensold. October 20th, 2021, an Indian woman named Anjali Rayat lost her life in a shootout between two gangs in Tulum, Mexico, just a few hours before she celebrated her 30th birthday. For context, Tulum is known for its beautiful white sandy beaches and crystal clear waters, and it's become a trendy destination for a younger crowd seeking a unique beach holiday experience in Mexico. However, the money flowing through the local hotels, restaurants, and bars made them attractive targets for extortion by criminal organizations and, worst of all, Mexican cartels. Now this, in addition to the fact that the demand for drugs amongst tourists turned out to be so profitable, it was an open market for these cartels and they took it. However, the origin of violence in this area would begin with cartels fighting over who was going to sell these drugs. While the homicide rate in Tulum, Playa del Carmen, and Cancun is relatively low compared to other parts of Mexico like Sinaloa and Jalisco, there were indications of a worsening security situation before this incident finally occurred. In June of the same year, there was a bold attack on a popular Cancun beach, resulting in an American tourist getting wounded and two deaths. The same month, two unidentified men were murdered on a Tulum beach, and from there it just kept getting worse. So how exactly did Anjali die? October 20th, 2021. This tragic incident occurred as she and her husband, Utkar Srivastava, were enjoying their time at a beach resort here. After having dinner, they would sit on the terrace of the La Macarida restaurant, engaging in a conversation with four other tourists. Out of nowhere, a group of armed individuals opened fire at a table nearby, leading stray bullets to hit on Jolly and another tourist, Jennifer Henshold from Germany. Both men died on the spot. The remaining three tourists, including on Jolly's husband, sustained injuries. The late night attack appeared to be tied to a territorial dispute. Whether the tourists were intended targets or innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire, we don't know. But what we do know is that the day after the attack, a group known as Los Pelones which has been a source of terror in the area since at least 2017 and is allegedly linked to the Gulf Cartel, claimed responsibility. Now you're asking why did they attack the tourists? Well, they felt their counterpart like the Jalisco New Generation Cartel was dominating the sales of drugs in this area. So they would attack these tourists in hopes to chase others away and stop all businesses, both criminal and legitimate. Simply put, if they couldn't have the upper hand in the market, no one could. But the Mexican government wasn't about to let this just happen. The authorities deployed 300 troops from the National Guard to bolster security in the area. 
and we can't deny it was a solid move, but the thing is, it also has its downsides. Maintaining the image of Tulum as a fun place to relax and have some classic avocado toast, alongside federal guards patrolling the beach, is a challenge. Who's gonna enjoy their time with all these guards holding guns everywhere? Maybe that's the only solution. Maybe it'll cease being a tourist attraction. But the point here is tourists aren't safe in Tulum. Number 2. Latavia McGee Latavia, a resident of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, set off on this journey with three of her close friends to Matamoros, Mexico. All Latavia really wanted was a tummy tuck surgery. Joining the growing number of American women seeking more affordable surgical procedures across the border. But the events that eventually unfolded were far from that. It might interest you to know that it wasn't the first time Latavia was in Mexico getting surgery done. However, this time things would take a terrifying turn. When Latavia and her friends got to Matamoros, they couldn't identify the clinic where she had an appointment. These friends of hers came along as a form of protection just to keep her safe. But in the process of locating their destination, gunshots suddenly rang out, shattering their plans. They found themselves caught in a gunfight between two Mexican cartels. It felt like a bad dream, and it felt even worse after two of Latavia's friends, Zindel Brown and Shaid Woodward, lost their lives getting hit by stray bullets. Latavia and another companion, Eric Williams, were taken captive by one of the cartels and spent four harrowing days in captivity with the lifeless bodies of their friends beside them. And we're really not surprised if you've heard this story before because it's made headline news globally. Mexican officials believe the friends were taken by mistake, as criminals in Mexico typically don't target Americans. And we know this because immediately after the cartel found out they were Americans, they tendered an apology letter. Heh, <laughs> you heard that right. Two days after McGee and Williams were let go, Mexican authorities found five men tied up and dumped by the roadside, with a letter from the cartel saying that these men were the ones responsible for the attack on the Americans. It was all kind of weird and confusing until Latavia came back to the US revealing more information about what exactly went down. Latavia explained that she initially wanted to get this tummy tuck as a way to hide having six children. A lot of people blamed her for having these insecurities which led to the death of her friends, but Latavia was dealing with a lot already, and adding extra blame wasn't helping anything. Now at the same time the question of why she chose to go to Mexico to get this done was also brought up. And the answer was simple, cost-saving. Medical tourism in Mexico is by far one of the most popular reasons Americans go to that country. Many Americans, mostly women, make this trip each year, getting these surgeries at affordable prices that they couldn't do in the US. This has been the trend for many years, despite the dangers of encountering a Mexican cartel. I'd probably be doing a huge injustice if I didn't dive deeper into why Americans like Latavia go all the way to Mexico for these procedures. You see, Tamaulipas, the state in Mexico where the incident occurred, is notorious for cartel violence and is one of the Mexican states that the U.S. State Department warns Americans to avoid due to the high crime rates. Yet, women from the U.S. continue to cross the border from Brownsville, Texas into Matamoros because of how good the doctors are over there when it comes to doing these body enhancements. You see, in 2019, about 1.2 million Americans traveled to Mexico for these procedures, with cosmetic surgeries making roughly 15% of all medical travel from the US. The cost savings are ridiculous, making it a really attractive option for those looking for affordable alternatives. To put into context how lucrative this is, this woman named Jasmine Wilson from Washington, D.C. shared her experience about traveling to Mexico for body shaping surgery. She mentioned that the same procedure in the U.S. could have cost her $20,000, while in Mexico, it was only a quarter of that price. This significant cost difference coupled with the willingness of Mexican surgeons to operate on patients with higher body mass indexes has really contributed to the popularity of medical tourism. You see, for patients undergoing procedures like butt lifts, complications like blood clots or embolisms are a significant concern. However, doctors in Mexico are experts at managing these risks, making the risk to reward ratio favorable when weighed against encountering a cartel. That's crazy. Okay, enough of the lecture. So, 
Why was Latavia a target that day? If it's common practice for women to go to Mexico for these types of surgeries, well, we're tempted to say she was at the wrong place at the wrong time, but maybe it was also the fact that she was in a car with three men that made the cartel mistake them for their rivals. And according to Latavia herself, she claimed that she saw the clinic online, probably on TikTok or Instagram, and was wowed by the doctors showing their before and after. So she decided to take a trip down there. But, as I've already said, they got lost. And as they tried to go back to Texas, a car obstructed their path, and one of the passengers displayed a gun. One of their friends urged everyone to crouch down and go, but as soon as they did, gunfire erupted. A bystander's video captured the moment when they were loaded into the bed of a white pickup truck and taken away. Surprisingly, Latavia was the only one of the four not seriously injured. She and Mr. Williams then decided they should attempt an escape and seek help. She ran towards the gated fence but was forced back down and beat when she failed to climb over. The captors eventually took her back into the truck and drove away. The four friends were transported to what appeared to be a makeshift clinic. It was there that they realized the extent of the tragedy with the two of them, Mr. Brown and Mr. Woodward, appearing lifeless. Mr. Williams, who had been stripped and shot in the legs, had his wounds hastily stitched. Subsequently, they were moved again to another location where they found themselves among a dozen other captives who had been severely beaten. After two days, Latavia successfully escaped once again. When she spotted an empty vehicle outside their place of captivity, she was able to grab a guard's phone on her way out and dial 911 repeatedly, hoping that some police would come to their rescue. But in the minutes of waiting for an operator to pick up, her captors eventually caught up with her and took her back to their base. Latavia managed to scream for help before the cell was taken away from her, leading authorities to pin her location and attempt a rescue mission. She was eventually rescued alongside Mr. Williams while the cartel issued an apology letter that really got everyone surprised. And if you're asking if she ever got that tummy tuck surgery done, well, she did it. On the other hand, Williams got to get surgery for his legs and may never walk again. And number one. Benjamin Gamond. May 2023, 23-year-old Argentinian rugby player Benjamin Gamond was touring the state of Oaxaca, Mexico before he was brutally killed with a machete by cartel members. Gamond played for Club Tala in Argentina and was a high-profile rugby player. He was looking to enjoy a nice time while on vacation, so he left Argentina with two friends and headed to the island in Villa de Tututepec, Mexico. When they got there, they met a man named Cruz Irving Martinez Flores, who introduced himself as a surf instructor proceeding to show him around. After a pretty normal conversation, it seemed like they just made a new friend, but that was far from the truth. The next day, when Gamond and his friend set out to surf the water, they approached Martinez, asking him where they could find surfboards. To their surprise, he looked at them like he had no idea who they were and why the heck they were even talking to him in the first place. This confused him a bit, making them head to a different beach in Laguna de Chacawa. And while that was arguably the safest thing they could have done at that moment, it didn't stop Martinez from carrying out his diet diabolical plan. On the day of the incident, Gamond was having a peaceful time at the beach before Martinez came out of nowhere and used a machete to strike his head from behind, shattering his skull in the process. As a result of this devastating attack, he experienced hypovolemic shock, which basically is a condition caused by significant blood loss. While Martinez ran away, other beachgoers swiftly transported Gamond to the General Hospital in Mexico City, where he eventually died. His death was mourned by his family, his club, and even his fans. The fact that Martinez attacked without any form of provocation was just disturbing. Two of his friends, Santiago Lastra and Macarena Gonzalez, who accompanied him to Mexico, also suffered from this attack. Santiago sustained a broken arm while trying to fight off Martinez and his crew, while Macarena got a cut and a fractured humerus. Now, being a high-profile case, all hands were on deck to get this guy and it didn't take long before Martinez was arrested. Why did he do it? We will never know. But what we do know is that Martinez also went after three other tourists on the same beach. After the police took in Cruz Irving into custody the following morning, it was identified that Martinez was a 21-year-old native from Omatepec, Guerrero, meaning he wasn't even a resident of the area. When asked why he killed Ramon, he kept a straight face. However, according to some speculations, Martinez was mentally unstable and had dealings with the cartel in the past. This made him feel Ramon and his friends were sent to kill him, resulting in this reckless attack. Benjamin's brother Facundo, who intended to visit his brother in Mexico left a heartfelt message for him through Instagram. It read, Fly high, Torito. We shall meet again. We love you.